We are making this short video to present distinctiveness centrality, which is a new metric that can be used in social network analysis and more in general in the analysis of graphs or complex networks. I'm Andrea Fronzetti Colladon from the University of Perugia in Italy, and this is a joint work with my colleague Maurizio Naldi from Lumsa University. When we designed distinctiveness centrality, we started from some traditional centrality measures in social network analysis that we had been using for many years. What the well-known centrality metrics usually do is to attribute more importance to nodes that are very central in the network. I mean very well connected nodes or nodes that are connected to very important peers. If you take, for example, eigenvector centrality, you can say that even if you have a low degree, but you are the daughter of Obama, you are still a very important person. This because you are connected to a super important node, the former president of the United States. This is a viewpoint common to many centrality metrics. Of course, degree, betweenness and closeness all capture different constructs. We present distinctiveness centrality as an add-on to all these well-known metrics, and we use it to try answer the question, who has the most distinctive connections? To do so, we designed a set of five metrics. Just to give you a brief example of the logic behind them, let's take a look at the picture. We see that node 2 has a degree equal to 5, whereas node 1 has a degree of 4. So if we take degree centrality, we say that node 1 is less important than node 2. On the other hand, if we take distinctiveness centrality, we see that node 1 is regarded as more important because it can reach nodes 6, 7 and 8, which otherwise would be disconnected from the main network component. Node 1 is reaching peripheral nodes and it's the only one who can reach them. By contrast, node 2 is reaching other nodes in the network that are quite well connected. This was to introduce the logic behind distinctiveness. Now we can go more in details. On the slide you also have the reference to the paper we published on PLOS ONE, which more extensively describes the metric and their properties. While thinking about distinctiveness centrality, we were inspired by the term frequency inverse document frequency function, which is often used in text analysis to rescale the weight of words that distinguish different text documents. Looking at the formula, we see that the term frequency of word i appearing in document x is multiplied by the logarithm of the total number of documents in the corpus divided by the number of documents in which the word high appears. Let's look at the matrix below. On the columns, we have all the words used in the three sentences. Rows are the sentences that we can consider as text documents. If we look at the word high, we see that it appears in all documents, so it doesn't really help in distinguishing them. The word kids, on the other hand, only appears in one document, so we can use this information to distinguish that document from the others. For distinctiveness centrality, we followed a similar lo logic. If you are friend of a person who has many friends, you are just one out of many. Instead, if you are friend with someone who only has one friend, that is you, then you are her best friend. That connection is more important according to distinctiveness centrality. I told you we have five formulas to calculate distinctiveness. The first two are shown here and are very similar. They only differ because in D1 we consider hard weights and in D2 we don't. In D1, to calculate distinctiveness of node high, we multiply the weight of x connections by the logarithm of the maximum number of possible connections a node can have, which is n minus 1, divided by the degree of the node connected to i. In all the formulas of distinctiveness, we have an alpha coefficient that can be set bigger than 1 to allow a stronger penalization of connection with highly connected nodes. It is important to notice that for alpha bigger than 1, 
the logarithmic term can become negative. For each metric, we can also define upper and lower bounds. For example, if we look at D1, we can see that the maximum value of the metric is reached when a node is connected to all other nodes in the network and its peers have no other connections. I'm referring to the star graph on the left and I'm saying that distinctiveness is maximum for the central nodes. On the other hand, we can have a minimum value of distinctiveness in a complete network, the graph that we see on the right. In this network, values are negative if alpha is bigger than 1 and 0 for alpha equal to 1. In all these formulas, we take big M as the maximum arc weight. D3, D4 and D5 are alternative formulas for the calculation of distinctiveness, where we use different penalization factors. In D3, we consider the sum of all arc weights in the network. D4 and D5 are other two alternatives without the logarithmic term. D4 and D5 only differ by the fact that arc weight is considered in D4 and only no degree is considered in D5. This is similar to the case of D1 and D2. What we did after designing the metric was to compare the ranking that they produced with those of other popular network measures. Here we show some examples, whereas in the paper you have more comparisons. We generated 1000 random scale-free networks and calculated centrality and other metrics such as BART's constraint for structural holes or effective sides. We used Sperman correlation to calculate average correlations of these metrics with distinctiveness centrality. Results, of course, depend on the network structure and may vary changing the networks. This is clear. In this example, we found no perfect overlap of information. I mean that the correlation coefficients were never equal to 1 or minus 1. Here we show the cases of weighted degree and betweenness and in the next slide of closeness and constraint. In general, we see that all correlations drop when we increase the value of the alpha coefficient. D4 and D5 are not so much affected by the variation of alpha and their correlations remain positive. The picture is different for D1, D2 and D3, which are much more affected by the variation of alpha. Their correlations quickly drop and become negative after specific alpha thresholds. Depending on the metric considered, we see that some correlations are higher than others, but again we never find a perfect overlap or rankings. Of course, for the constraint metric the relationship is reversed, as you can see in the figure indeed. Let's look at another example, considering this graph, which has a densely connected core and a loosely connected periphery. The blue node is in the core and the pink node is in the middle between the core and the periphery. What we want to show here is that, whereas all the other centrality metrics we consider attribute more importance to the node in blue, distinctiveness centrality says that the node in pink is more important. Let's see. Let's calculate D2 for the two nodes, since this is an unweighted network. And let's take alpha equal to 1. The node in blue is connected to three other nodes in the core, and one node that is between the periphery and the core. All the neighbors of the blue node have degree equal to 4. So for D2, we have 4 times the logarithm of 19 divided by 4, which is the degree of the neighbors of the blue node. We get a score of distinctiveness centrality equal to 2.71. The pink node is connected to one node in the network core and two three peripheral nodes. So if we calculate D2, we have a contribution equal to the logarithm of 19 over 4 given by the node in the core. In addition, every peripheral node is adding the logarithm of 19 over 1, as they only have a connection with the pink node. This leads to a score of 4.51 that is much higher than that of the blue node. In the table, we see a comparison with also other metrics. 
Pink and blue have the same degree equal to 4. However, all distinctiveness centrality metrics indicate that the pink node is more important than the blue one. On the other hand, closeness and betweenness say the opposite. This analysis can be generalized to weighted networks. Here we can see also intuitively that node B is very important. But if we play a little bit with the alpha coefficient of distinctiveness, we see that the rankings change. You see it on the tables that are on the right. With alpha equal to 1, B is the most important node and the least important is F. The picture is different if we consider alpha equal to 5. Node A becomes the most important. This because we are penalizing more the connections towards non-peripheral nodes. We can additionally compare the rankings produced by the distinctiveness centrality on the right with those produced by the other metrics on the left. We consider degree, betweenness, closeness, eigenvector centrality, structural holes, constraint and effective sides. We also consider their weighted versions. If we compare the two sets of tables, we see that the rankings do not perfectly overlap with those of distinctiveness, which means that distinctiveness captures different information and can be used as an additional metric. The last thing I want to talk about is indeed love letters. We can use this example to generalize distinctiveness centrality to directed networks. So I will ask you if you prefer receiving a love letter from someone who sends love letters to everybody or from someone who just wrote to you. Probably the majority of you would prefer the second option. This inspired the design of in and out degree distinctiveness centrality, similarly to the case of in and out degree. We want to value incoming links more when they originate from nodes that send few outgoing links. If I receive a love letter from somebody who is writing just to me, I will value that letter more. The same reasoning can be applied to out distinctiveness centrality. I could ask you if you prefer sending a love letter to someone who receives love letters from everybody. In this case, you have a lot of competitors, so it might be complicated. Then I could ask you if you prefer sending a love letter to someone who just receives your love letter. So unless you are not jealous at all and you really love competition, I would say you choose option B. If I am a node in, in a graph, then I consider my outgoing ties more important if they reach nodes with few incoming ties. Otherwise, I send my ties to nodes that receive connections from many other nodes in the network, and my connection is just one out of many. So again, we can generalize all the five distinctiveness centrality metrics considering directed networks. I'm not bombarding you with formulas you can read in the paper. I just want to show you the generalization of D1. We indicate out distinctiveness with a plus sign and indistinctiveness with a minus sign. Let's see two examples on the graphs below the formulas. In the graph on the left, we see that the blue arc is important in terms of out distinctiveness for the black node. It reaches a node that only has that incoming arc. The pink arc, on the other hand, adds little value to the out distinctiveness of the black node. This arc reaches a node that has many incoming arcs. Let's now look at the other network, considering the indistinctiveness centrality of the black node. The blue arc here has more value than the pink one, because it comes from a node that sends just one outgoing arc. The pink arc, on the other end, comes from a node that sends outgoing arcs to almost everybody in the network. In the paper, you can see all the formulas and more calculation examples for directed network. Now that we have defined these five new metrics, there are many open questions about their possible applications. One advantage of all the metrics is that they are relatively fast to calculate even on large networks. For example, they are much faster than betweenness. Thinking of possible uses, we plan to test distinctiveness in criminal networks. We still don't know, but it could be the case that our metrics are useful to identify some kind of criminals. 
Sometimes the most important nodes in criminal networks are not too central indeed, but they have middle positions between the network core and the periphery. We are also testing distinctiveness for network fragmentation purposes. So we want to answer the question, could it help decide who should be vaccinated during a pandemic in order to limit the spread of a virus? Here we have a couple of friendship networks for two villages in Uganda. We refer to Borgatti's fragmentation metric, the one described in this paper about the key players' problems. So compared to closeness, betweenness and degree centrality, distinctiveness is promising. In this static calculation example, we can reach good fragmentation levels selecting nodes by D2 or D5, which are the orange and red curves. This is indeed still a very preliminary experiment and we plan to do much more tests in the future. We now wish to thank you very much for your attention. We also want to tell you that on the PyPy repository you have a Python package named Distinctiveness that allows you to calculate our metrics. The code is open source and integrates with Network X. You find everything on GitHub. So we are very happy if you want to test our metrics and let us know what you think. Thanks a lot.